Today I want to talk about beard and stubble and how it affects the fit of respirators. Uh, big studies and 3M all say that beard and stubble affects uh, how a respirator fits and fit is really the key to getting the best protection from your respirator. Um, Filtering face piece respirators are supposed to be uh, the most susceptible to it, although N95s um, less so than uh, ear loop masks. If you want a good fit, an ear loop mask doesn't seal as tightly against your face, although I know people have strong preference uh, for headbands or for ear loops. Uh, what's supposed to be a little more forgiving are uh, elastomeric masks, like this uh, 3M6000 series respirator. It's got an elastomeric rubber seal, a cushion that's squishable, um, and it's got good head straps to help pull your beard flat against your face, even though you're not supposed to have the beard. Uh, we'll try that one. And then there's this, which is the uh, Den... <laughs> Sorry, Dentech. No, this is the GVS. The GVS Ellipse. And uh, I find that the GVS, if we can see it here, it's got a very hard, um, kind of not very squishy seal um, that doesn't work great for me. I find that I have... Uh, air leaking through the chin here. Uh, it's sort of erratic. And the last thing you want in the fit of your respirator is erratic fit. And finally, I'm gonna try out a special purpose mask, which is this, the Stick-On Mask by Ready Mask. It's not meant for being used on a beard, and I'm just testing it to see how bad it is at that. It's, it's not a, a slight upon the Ready Mask uh, if it doesn't do well. Because my theory is, or hypothesis, is that it's just gonna to stick to the surface of the stubble and it's gonna get terrible leaks because there's no pressure to push it down and seal better. But we'll find out. And then we'll do a smooth skin test uh, after we've done all of those. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start this test with the 3M Or. I'm not gonna talk during the test because I want the best possible results. I'm not torture testing this. Uh, we're just gonna do a basic static test. Wow, uh, 732. Yeah, 731 overall fit factor. Um, now, I am using the uh, N100 test, which is not what's normally used for uh, N95s. If you use the official uh, N95 test that uses particles that can't penetrate the mask easily, uh, the fit factor score caps out at 200. Since I'm doing a test you're not supposed to do on an N95, I'm not sure really how those fit factor scores uh, are supposed to cap out. Um, so, but still, 731 shows that it is possible to get a good seal, but you probably shouldn't count on it uh, with uh, three days of stubble. If you don't talk or do any of the other fit factor uh, tests that are part of the official OSHA test, I'm just doing the easy ones. Uh, and at some point, I might revisit this with more tests uh, and something a little more difficult. Next up, uh, I've got this 3M. To test an elastomeric respirator, you need to have a way uh, inside the mask, like here I've got a, a port, a little hole. It's expensive to punch holes in your elastomeric mask, so instead you can buy an expensive adapter, which costs more than the mask, um, but it lets you test other masks. You don't have to ruin every mask you want to test. This lets you put um, a little port inside the mask, and there is a tube here. Uh, they, they sell a suction cup that's supposed to be used, but it tape actually secures better. Don't know if that's an issue, but that's what we're going to do today. Okay, it seems to seal correctly. All right, so with this uh, 3M 6000 series respirator with P170-93 cartridges, we're going to give this a fit test oh, with stubble. Okay. Well, so uh, 5,620 uh, is the overall fit factor. That's just, you know, how much better an elastomeric mask is with P100s. Uh, and remember that um, the fit factor required for uh, one of these masks using the N95 test that doesn't let any uh, thing leak through the filter itself is 100. And elastomerics, you might test them at a higher rate, but uh, 5,620 is really good. That's with beard stubble and the head straps on pretty tight and a static test. So don't count on this being the same results. Uh, with working. And also, I already know this mask fits me well on my face. Next up, um, the mask that does not fit on my face as well. It's too narrow for my face. Um, it's the narrowest elastomeric mask I've got. 
uh, and the seal is, is uh, feels less forgiving. Here's a uh, different adapter on it. This is one sold by GVS. To their credit, uh, they have the least expensive test fit adapter, which is great because test fit adapters can cost $200, which is ridiculous. Uh, they should be encouraging mass fit testing, not discouraging it by having overpriced adapters. Hmm, okay, I've got it on. I've got this going. I think I can feel a leak at my chin. Uh, we'll find out. Oh, 5.6, 5.5 overall fit factor. Um, that's bad, that's really bad. Um, so this mask is NIOSH approved, so it's not, uh, oof. It, it is a professional mask. It, it's gonna fit some people really well. It does not fit me really well. Now I am wearing a uh, little bit of stubble, but as you saw, the, uh, the 3M didn't have any problem with the stubble and I got a great fit factor. But if you're wearing a P100 and you need P100 filtration, but you get a leak that takes you down to a uh, fit factor of five, meaning that the air is only um, five times cleaner inside uh, the mask. Rather, you know, these filters I assume are nice, ribbon, fabulous, but the leak, you don't get any of that benefit at all. Whereas with this mask that fit me well and had a good seal, I had air that was 5,000 times cleaner on the inside than with this mask with the leak that only gave me air that was 5.5 times cleaner. So uh, if you wear one of these masks or are considering one, um, please get fit tested to make sure that it fits you um, well, because this is the most erratic fitting elastomeric mask I've got. Um, it may fit some people great, but you won't know that for sure without fit testing. Now, the, uh, the last stubble test I'm going to do is going to be on the uh, ready mask. It's not meant for stubble. No mask really is, but I expect it to do especially poorly. And this is a reminder, I, if it does, uh, or even if it doesn't, if you're going to use a mask, you're going to get the best results with clean shaven skin. Uh, and don't count on fancy things like sticking to your face to work well if it's sticking to your beard and not your face. But let's find out what difference it makes. Okay, well, weirdly, I'm getting a leak at my nose bridge. Intermittent. Uh, the adhesive is just not adhering where well on the skin that's there. Um, and I can feel a little leak at my chin, which is expected. Um, I don't. All right, well, let's port this guy up and see where we're at. Okay, fit factor 11. It's um, it's 11 times cleaner inside the mask. Now, um, even though this was leaking, it still sealed better on my face than this GVS Elastomeric P100 mask. So, um, in spite of the stubble, it was still better on stubble than this mask on my face. Uh, your results may vary, and uh, so I'm going to go. Um, uh, I'm going to go shave and, and uh, try these two masks again. I'm not going to bother with the other ones because they both did really well with this double. There's nothing to compare. But uh, we'll see what difference it makes with the GVS and this, which will be on its fifth use. So definitely uh, putting it to the test. Okay, I am back and I've got smooth skin. I do have a beard, but I've shaved it so that it's smooth underneath. Uh, I'm just cheating. Uh, my fit testing in the past shows that I've been able to get uh, a good fit with that. Uh, maybe that's a problem with the, the GVS, don't know. At some point we'll have to test that as well. Right now we're going to test if this uh, smooth skin that makes all other masks fit fine works with the uh, GVS. And uh, here's the GVS. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on and we'll see if we can't get a better result this time. Well, it definitely feels better. Um, it's still a narrow mask and it kind of forces itself forward away from my chin because it's too narrow. Um, but I'm definitely feeling a better seal. I don't feel that cool air going past my nose, although when I talk, I sometimes feel flashes of, of air go past my nose. So this mask is, uh, I think, too small, even though it's a medium large. Okay, so let's see. Let's put the uh, test port on. All right, we're gonna do another static test just like we did before. Wow, 7,000, 7,230. So 
when it fits, it's great. So uh, the GVS has great filters. When it fits, it's great, but this is the least reliable um, mask I've got. It swings between 5.5 fit factor and 7,230. That on my face is unreliable and not safe. On your face, it may be better, um, but please, if you've got one of these or are considering getting one, get fit tested. It's not a universally recommendable mask. It just doesn't have that forgiving fit um, that we recommend elastomerics for. Uh, and if you do fit test well, make sure that you keep your um, skin smooth because uh, even with the fit testing, it may still be intolerant at the chin with stubble. So um, please be careful with this. Uh, next up, I'm going to try this mask again, but this time on smooth skin and see if that helps. This will be the fifth use of this, uh, this adhesive. So I don't expect great performance, but it is supposed to be good for 10. So I should still get N95 performance. I'm hoping I'll get at least a fit factor of 20, which would be a total of 5% um, in inward leakage. But remember, this is a, an N100 test that we're using. So it's counting um, air going through the filter as well as around it. Uh, which is not how the uh, OSHA standard for N95 testing works. Okay, I am getting some intermittent, intermittent leaks up here. Um, I, I don't know exactly why that is, but maybe the adhesive is just want more worn out up at the top. So it's important to make sure you get this seal under the chin, this uh, intersection of seams really tight, because that's a critical junction in getting this mask to work correctly. All right, and um, let's go. 161 okay um so clearly um you should shave before using this we expected that or i expected that uh, i think it's especially important in this mask um and remember this mask performs better <laughs> um on stubble than the gvs did but it still needs to be worn uh, on clean uh, smooth skin so these are a great special purpose mask for various uh, uh uses I've worn this one for getting haircuts, um, but I'm sure there are other uses besides MRIs as well as haircuts for them. So uh, a great handy mask to have in your toolkit.